And I'm reading this morning, if you've got your Bibles, it's <coughs> taken from the book of Proverbs, chapter 29, <coughs> and starting at, shall we say, verse 17, and it reads, Correct your son, and he will give you rest. Yes, he will give delight to your soul. Where there is no revelation, the people cast off restraint, but happy is he who keeps the law. A servant will not be corrected by mere words, for though he understands, he will not respond. Do you see a man hastily, hasty in his words? There is more hope for a fool than for him. He who pampers his servants from childhood will have him as a son in this end. <coughs> An angry man stirs up strife, and a furious man abounds in transgressions. A man's pride will bring him love, but the humble in spirit will retain honor. Whoever is a partner with a thief hates his own life. He swears to tell the truth, but reveals nothing. The fear of man brings a snare, but whosoever trusts in the Lord shall be safe. Many seek the ruler's favor, but justice for man comes from the Lord. An unjust man is an abomination to the righteous, and he who is upright in the ways is an abomination to the wicked. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word this morning. And um, just been thinking, reading there from Proverbs chapter 29 and thinking really how practical the book of, of Proverbs <coughs> is. And the book of Proverbs, Proverbs it will give us wisdom in how to live our lives, in how to treat other people and how to live the Christian life. And sometimes I've found there are difficult situations to go into, but because I've had some of been had some of the proverbs on my mind, I know how to respond and act in different situations. You know, this week, Proverbs 29, verse 18 really stood out. In the New King James, it says, where there is no revelation the people cast off restraint. But happy is he who keeps the law. But you may be more familiar with this verse in the King James Version, where it says, where there's no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. And I found this interesting because I hear so many people using this verse to refer to a business project. Now, I get it. If you're in business, you've got to have a vision. You've got to know where you're going to go. Or I hear this verse, <clears throat> people use it sometimes to put pressure on church leaders for church direction, but especially for the new year. <clears throat> but a few days ago, I was reading in 1 Samuel 3, 1, and the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no widespread revelation or there was no wisdom, no widespread wisdom. <coughs> so this is not dealing with a business plan or a proposal. It is the revelation or the vision here refers here in Proverbs of 1 Samuel to God's divine communication, God speaking to his prophets, God revealing himself, revealing his word to the prophets, to his people, that they may, through God's spirit, speak directly to the congregation. And God, as we know, He can speak to our spirit by His Spirit, because God is Spirit. He can speak through, He can send an angel to speak. He can send a dream. He can send a visual vision, a picture in front of us to reveal who He is. See, a revelation from God was given. And we see this through the Old Testament. But here it's getting rare, it's getting scarce. 
Interestingly, Ezekiel 7.26 reads, Disaster will come upon disaster, and rumor will be upon rumor. Then they will seek a vision, a revelation from the prophets. But the law will perish from the priests and counsel from the elders. When Israel, were under, when Israel was under a time of judgment, there were three types of spiritual advisors for Israel. And they had no vision, no revelation, no divine communication for the people. <coughs> the priests had no sound of judgment. They could not make they couldn't make a decision based on the te- on the commandments of the Old Testament law. The elders couldn't give any wise counsel or advice. All three sources of revelation, the elders, the the priests, and the prophets, they didn't have the revelation, the visions. They were silent. It's almost... uh, And there in the Psalms, in Psalm 74, 9, it said, We are given no signs from God. No prophets are left. And none of us knows how long this will be. Yes, there are times when God is silent and we just have to simply trust in what we know about God and the revelation that he has given. Now, I was encouraged this week. I I know it's a story, but it's so true. I was reading C.S. Lewis's The Hideous Strength and in it, the, the minister there, he's speaking and he's saying to these PhD students and that, and he's saying it in there, he's saying, you know, I, I didn't find Jesus in a theological seminary with all of its smoke and all of its eyewash. He says, I found Jesus at the cold face. I found Jesus at the side of the coffin of my daughter. And in for that person, the, the, the revelation of God, Christ broke it. You know, I know what another lady, a, a, a real life now, and, and she was beside herself because her child had, had died. You know, had buried, buried her child and, and constantly depressed and angry, numb, and all the emotions that go with losing a child. And what she said one day, she broke down in her bedroom, fell on her knees, and she just wept. And as she stood there by her bed weeping, she just said, Father, thy will be done. Father, thy will be done. Father, thy will be done. And she said it was like heaven opened up and the peace of God came into my soul. Not my will, but your will. And she said, as she surrendered her will to the Lord, that peace came in. And how we need this in these days for people to encounter the living God, to have a revelation from the Lord that all is well, and there is peace that is found in Him. All three sources of revelation here were silent. And yes, there are times when God is silent and we must simply trust in what we know. And King Solomon wrote these Proverbs, chapters 1 to 29, with with, with, with this insight that that when, when God's word isn't being spoken, when God's word isn't being spoken under the unction and the leading of the Holy Spirit, then the people, they cast off restraint. All the people will perish. And, and that means they're to loosen. The same word perish, cast off restraint, is used in Exodus 32 verse 25. It says, during the golden calf incident, Moses saw the people were running wild. And that Aaron had let, the, let them get out of control, <coughs> so, became, so they became a laughing stock to their enemies. Casting off restraint, 
perishing, running wild, out of control. That's what happens when we go astray and we reject the revelation or from, from God. And this perish here, this running wild, it, it also gets interpreted in the Hebrew as being empty, as being vacant, as being unoccupied. And that's what happens when we don't accept the revelation of God, the word of the Lord into our lives. We become unoccupied territory and we become empty and we run around just doing our own things. And all the time we're trying to fill this gap within us, this empty space. You know, I was looking at some of the boys the other day, a couple of days ago, and you know, and they're just off of their heads or, or on coke and, and on heroin and, and just drinking. And I'm thinking, I know what your problem is, guys. You, you've rejected the revelation of God. And you've got this emptiness in you and you're just trying to fill it because of all the stuff that's gone on in your life and you can't handle it, you can't put it back together again, you need Jesus. But they're not going to find Christ if we don't go and, and share Jesus with them. See, without God's revelation and vision, we go astray and we become a laughing stock to our and you know, that verse is the verse that Anne was reading about praying for your enemies, loving your enemies. I sometimes wish that I could rub that out of the Bible. Because it's so hard, so, so hard, when your enemies have really messed you up bad, really done you over. And all you can do again, like that lady weeping in grief, is get into your room, get into that closet before the Lord, you pour out your heart and you're saying, Father, so and so did this and this is how they made me feel and I give it to you and I place them into <coughs> your hands and I pray that you fill me with the Holy Spirit because I cannot forgive in my own strength. And I give you what they're putting me through and as that happens, and as you're in that, and as you're broken and you're crushed in it all, God is drawing near and he's touching the pain sinews, that the emotions of pain, God's breaking in and he's touching that. Because we're so empty and we're not designed to cope with grief. We're not built and designed to cope with pain and with suffering and with evil and with the things in the world that are so horrendous that we have a God who is theistic, a theistic God who breaks in, fills us with his Holy Spirit. A God who comes alongside when nobody else is watching. A God who walks with us through our trials, our difficulties and our tribulations. Of God who could make his word jump out of the pages of scripture and into our hearts and into our minds. And we say, Father, that's exactly what I need. Because through the spirit of God, through the word of God, he enables you to keep the right shape that you were created to be. Without the Lord, we get bent out of shape. We get mangled. We get twisted. We get pushed down. But it's like as God breathes into us, it's like we get inflated and we come back to how we should be. And all that we've experienced of the Lord and know of the Lord, that should flow through us and should touch others. And as it touches others around, God continues to fill because he comforts us to comfort others as difficult as it can be. And, and, and in that brokenness, there is an intimacy with, with, with the Lord because he is a God of wholeness and if he puts us back together again so we can represent him and show forth his character. So don't break loose from the gospel revelation. God's given you his word. He's given you his spirit. 
And this is why we see and hear such bad things happening in our communities of thefts and arson and violence and people just being uncontrolled. I saw a documentary on one of the prisons recently, the worst prison in Britain, and the reason it was so bad, it was because the, 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 the rapists, the pedophiles, and the murderers were all under the age of 21. And every time the police go in, they've always got the riot gear on to keep order in this prison in the north of England. People become uncontrolled when they reject God's revelation. <coughs> and no one, has, if no one showed God's revelation, the gospel, how can they change? Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. He's come to save sinners. He's come to set captives free. He's come to remove the weight of oppression. All we have to do is believe on him and accept him into our lives. And we stand back and we see the work of God happening in us and through us and around us. And we have to step back and say, this is the work of the Lord. Because I can't do anything in my own strength. See, the prophet Hosea, his words are so true. Verses 4 to 6. He says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Since you have rejected knowledge... I will also reject you from being my priests. Since you have forgotten the law of your God, I also will forget your children. Forgetting the revelation of God, it destroys us. It cuts us off from, from God himself. The priests should have kept God's word alive in their hearts. And sometimes we've got to pray, Lord, bring your word alive to me. Let it speak to me. Let me walk in that revelation of what you want me to know. Because knowledge of God is life eternal. It is life eternal. John 17, 3. Now this is eternal life. That they know you, the only true God. And Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. And I, have a, you know, in America at the moment, only 70% 70 70 of evangelicals believe that all religions lead to heaven. 30% are believing that Jesus is the only way. It's frightening. You know, applying the knowledge of God to our life is what we must do to know Him, to know Jesus Christ, His Son, whom God has sent to reveal God the Father. When you focus on Jesus, you're encountering the Father. Keeping God's Word reveals to us who God is so that we may know Him. The Word of God is living and it is active. And it is divine communication. Solomon also taught in Proverbs 8.32. Now therefore, listen to me, my children. For blessed are those who keep my ways. There is blessedness. Blessedness can be translated happiness. That comes through keeping the word of the Lord. The revelation, the vision that comes from God. We receive it by faith. It feeds our soul. We simply read it and believe it and trust in it. And it builds us up. It makes us wise in these last days. Our faith is God's open revel our faith in God's open revelation. And keeping his law, his word, it leads to blessedness. We neglect God's word at our peril. King David, Solomon's dad, would meditate on the law of God day and night. King David said, I just love these words, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. He stands in the path of sinners nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, 
and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the river of water that brings forth fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and wherever he, whatever he does shall prosper. When we receive what the Lord has said in his word and we apply it, then we will prosper. The Old Testament children of God knew there was power in God's word so that they could know God and will be blessed by keeping his ways. And this is what God wants for us. He wants us to know him. He wants us to live for him. Not just knowing things about him, but to, to walk with him as our best friend. And for that to happen, sometimes we've got to go through the tough stuff and have those rough edges knocked off of us and rubbed down and refined so that he can be seen more clearly in our lives. You know, a friend of mine, I, you know, he struggles with some bad epilepsy <laughs> and, and he's like, Lord just hasn't taken this away from me. But he said, I look forward to the day when I enter heaven and I'll no longer be a bad epileptic. You see, he had a walk with the Lord. And sometimes you, you'd go into, into his house, into his room, and he'd be reading his little Gideon's Bible, and, and just the presence and the peace of the Lord was there amongst all of his problems. The people who cast off the word of God and the revelation, they can bonk us. They go wild. They cast off restraint because they're empty and they're grasping, trying to fill it. Hence, we need to know and to keep the divinely inspired word. We are blessed in knowing his word and the spirit of God who reveals God was God's word so we may know God the Father and God the Son. And I tell you, when you start living in God's Word, when you start walking in the Spirit, one of the amazing things is sometimes the Spirit of God will just prompt you, go down this way, go this direction. Other times, He'll just say, it's time to leave this company now. The company here isn't right, it's grieving my spirit. You've done what I've asked you to do in that situation. You've been salt and light. Now it's time to come away. The Lord gives us direction by his word and by his spirit. And sometimes when we're in company and it's so blasphemous and it's the devil's language that you're hearing, all the filth and all the swear words, that's the devil's language. And it can affect your spirit. It can affect your soul. It can even torment your mind to some degree. And sometimes the Holy Spirit just prompts and just says, come away. Come away. And you come away and you spend time in, in worship, in adoration to God. You get filled with the holiness and the purity of the Lord. Because when you walk in the world, it can feel like there, there is a, a contaminating poison that... that, that that's over the place and in certain places and the Lord just wants you to come away and be cleansed with his precious blood and to walk in the purity and the holiness of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and it's an intimate walk that we can each have with the Lord Jesus. And we're all, including myself, learning to walk with God, learning to know him, learning to abide in his holiness and in his presence. And the blood of the Lamb, it cleanses <coughs> us from all sin, and it acts as a holy deterrent. Will we be the people of God who take the revelation of God out to those who don't know him? May we communicate God's divine vision, his divine revelation to those who are going bonkers and casting off respect <coughs> because we have a heavenly Father who loves them. And we are to pray for our enemies as hard, as hard as it is. We must do that, and as we do that, we draw closer to the Lord.
and we, we, we learn to discern what he is saying and how he is leading and how he is directing. May we give him praise for his revelation and his vision. Thank you. And Nathan's just gone to get the magician, I mean the musician. <laughs> Oh, to be a tricker. Thank you.